Hello everyone, this is part two of the S-shaped growth model. And uh, if you haven't watched part one, please do so now. What we talked about really was how growth happens. There are certain things that drive growth. And in our model, we used word of mouth driving growth. More people talking about your product encourages more buying of your product. So that kind of drives up growth. And then usually something will slow it down. And in our case, we modeled uh, market saturation. So the, as the more you sell, the number of available customers remaining decreases. So you have something that drives it up, and then something that slows it down, and eventually your growth curve looks like an S. So what we wanted to do in this um, video was basically model it in Excel so you can kind of learn more about how it actually works. And so before we model it in Excel, there's, there's two tricky variables here. So I just wanted to walk through how we might model those before we start uh, uh, hitting the computer. So what's good to do probably is once you do your stock and flow diagram, is walk through each of the variables and mentally think about how you might calculate them. So your stocks are uh, usually very easy. So you just have to decide kind of where you're starting from. So let's say you start from 10,000 customers. That's kind of your available market. Uh, I sell the hospitals in the U.S., one of my markets, and there's 6,000 of those, so you can kind of round up to 10,000. Um, and then uh, we'll assume that you have 200 customers now. So basically you've got 2% of the market, so the market's in its infancy. Um, so now you go to word of mouth. Now this is kind of a nebulous concept. How might you measure word of mouth? What might be the units? So that's, uh, that's a common thing we think of is what are the units for this variable? So you could do word of mouth as like on a scale of 1 to 100. What's the word of mouth out there about my product? Um, I thought what would be most helpful in this one is to calculate the number of people talking positively about your product out there. So we'll do number of positive talkers, basically. So how might you determine that? Uh, you've got your customers. Some percentage of your customers will be satisfied. Maybe not all of them. So we could do a percent satisfied. Okay, so there's a percent of your customers that are out there positively and talking about the market. And then at each hospital customer, how many talkers really are there? How many people are talking per customer? So we have number of talkers per customer. And you multiply all these together and you get the number of positive satisfied talkers about your product. So that's how we'll calculate that variable. Now demand, um, oh, not a check mark yet. What I would suggest for demand is that um, we calculate this as the, per the units would be the percent of available market that buys this year. Okay. So and the correlation here is the more talkers you have, the higher percent will buy, and the less talkers you have, the lower percent will buy. So this is a, some kind of equation between word of mouth, the number of talkers driving, the percent of people that want to buy your, your product. So let's turn that into a math equation here. So usually, like in the prior videos, I'll just graph it out, um, a possible uh, correlation, and then, um, uh, and then we'll turn it into an equation. So let's say the number of talkers is driving demand. And let's say if there are zero talkers, there is zero demand. So we'll start here. And then we'll say if there's 6,000 talkers, and I can describe where I got that number, but let's say um, there's 6,000 talkers, uh, talkers out there. And if you have that many talkers, your demand will be 5%. Okay? And let's, let's assume that it's a linear equation from here. So as you have more talkers, the demand's going to go up. And once you get 6,000 talkers, doesn't matter, 7,000, 8,000, you kind of max out at 5% because the word is so positive, you don't really need more. So, so we'll have that be the equation. The way I got to 6,000 is I assume maybe halfway through the adoption, um, you know, there's 5,000 customers here. And those Two-thirds are satisfied, so that's um, uh, 3,000, or 60% are satisfied. That's 3,000, maybe two talkers per customer. We'll give you 6,000 uh, talkers here, and, and halfway through the adoption, you kind of get at this 5% mark. 
So if you were to write this into equation, if you remember kind of middle school algebra, it's the y-axis, so demand equals the slope, which is rise over run. The rise is 5%. The run is 6,000 times the x-axis plus the y-intercept, which is 0. So the demand is going to be 5% over 6,000 times the number of talkers. Uh, and then this has a max of 5%, which is easy to do uh, in Excel with, um, with a max. So that's this variable. So we've got these. And then buying would just be the number of available customers times the percent that we're going to buy this year will be this variable, buying. Okay? So now we've kind of worked our way kind of mentally through these variables. Let's type it in Excel and let's see what the, uh, the output looks like. Okay, great. Now we're in Excel and we're going to make this a model. Um, so let's leave some room for constants on the top. But let's do beginning for stocks. Remember you have a beginning, available market. And we'll start at 10,000. Let's do time here, years, or time in years. Zero. Let's do time zero. Uh, and then leave a space for any flows. Ending available market in um, time zero is the same. Okay. And then uh, we'll do time one. The beginning is always equal to the ending from the time before. Uh, and then we'll come back to buying. Okay. Your beginning, your customer. So let's do that stock. Start at 200 and then ending your customers. And time zero will be the same, and then beginning will be the same as ending. Okay, um, let's do the tricky one. So, word of mouth, which is the number of people talking. Number of talkers. Um, if you recall, we had um, percent satisfied on the board. That's a constant. Let's say that's 60. And name your constant. Satisfied. And then we had number of talkers per customer. And we'll do that as two talkers. Okay. So basically, the number of positive talkers are the number of customers times the percent that are satisfied times the number of talkers per customer. Okay, so with 200 customers, you have uh, some satisfied, I guess 120, uh, and then two people talking per customer is 240 talkers. Okay, now you have the demand, and if you recall our equation, it was rise over run, 5% divided by 6,000 times the number of talkers. So the demand starts out very small at 0.2%. And so the buying, actually we have that already up here, buying is really the demand times the number of available customers. So therefore 20 customers will buy in this first year. Okay, now to finish out the model, the ending available market is the 10,000 minus the 20. The number of customers you have is the 200 plus the number that are buying. So that buying takes away from one stock and adds to another. Sorry, I put that in the wrong place. Um, 200 plus the buying. Uh, so we don't really need this space here. And I believe that's the model. Let me just copy this for a few cells. Let's see what it looks like here. Uh, demand is going up. That looks OK. Uh, the ending customer is going down. Sorry, available market going down. Number of our customers going up. And time looks wrong. So time is really that plus one. So that looks better. 
Okay, so let's, uh, so now that the model is basically done, let's copy this out uh, for 50 periods, which is um, the two alphabets. Oh, I forget how many rows it was. Uh, 13. Try that again. So row 13. So that's our model, and then we will take uh, ending customers, how about something we're interested, we will wrap it, finish it, and there you have it. That is an S curve. So you can see that it, it was growing exponentially, so the reinforcing loop was driving the demand up. And even though you had an a increasing demand, it was being multiplied by an ever-decreasing available market, so you had it slow down. So the one thing I forgot to do was max out the demand at five, but uh, we could probably just take a look to make sure that that didn't cause a problem. Oh, it did cause a problem. So you could change this thing. Whenever you think of a max, you actually type in min in Excel. So min of that slash five percent. Uh, so that will max out at five. Okay, so that looks about the same. Uh, so basically, you've got something that grows exponentially and then slows down, and uh, of course, it will be uh, a hard stop at 10,000 um, uh, in this uh, in this particular market. So uh, the model turned out to be just like we uh, we thought it would be, and this is the way growth works: something drives it, something holds uh, holds it back. So I'm going to go back to the board, and we'll summarize. Great. Well, I hope that made, uh, made sense uh, and it came up with the results we thought. But it's a little bit surprising because most people don't think of growth as this S-shaped curve. But that's the way it actually happens in the business world and in many, uh, many other kind of social, uh, social situations. So here are the, really the lessons learned uh, from this other than you know, how, to, how to model it and how to, how to make it work. Uh, number one is you, sh you need to focus on what's important at your point in the product life cycle. So for instance, if you're here, you know, you need to focus on word of mouth, on reference sites, on case studies, on proof points, on things that'll drive up the word of mouth and drive up the demand in your marketplace. Now if you're here, you need to focus on expanding your market, finding new geographies, new segments to sell your products into new use cases for your for your product. So it's, it's got to be about expanding the market. So reference sites aren't going to matter or aren't going to be the more critical success factor at that point. It's more expanding market, adjacencies, new segments, that sort of, that sort of thing. And it seems obvious, but you know, I've seen product leaders really focus on expanding their market when they're here before they build reference sites and proof points for their product. They're constantly looking for more places to sell it when really you should hunker down and build those you know, those use cases and those success stories here. So focus on where you are in the life cycle. The second lessons learned is really, you know, what got you here won't get you further. And so what got your product here, you got to change your strategy to have it keep growing. And so, um, you know, if you were kind of great at forming those reference sites and proof points and those sorts of things, that's really not going to matter as much as expanding your your market. We always hear what gets a business successful doesn't keep it successful, and this is a good, uh, good example of that. And then, uh, and then, lastly, you really have to build your new S curves. There's, there's not a great way to avoid some kind of limit to growth, a market, uh, you know, competitive situation. Uh, you know, the, the, there's going to be some kind of limit to how far you can go. So you can't take your one product and expect it to grow forever. You've got to build those adjacencies and the new products and those sorts of things so they can have their own S-curve. And on balance, if you have a product portfolio that has different products at the beginning of the curve and at the end of the curve, you can have an overall growth for your, for your business. So it's really about portfolio management and knowing where you are on the S-curve with each of the, your products and having a balance. So I hope that was helpful and interesting, and I'll uh, talk to you uh, when I do the next video. Bye.